Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the tail fins that I just made. As you can see, I got two pairs. One's plain Jane, the other one's colored. And there's a reason I had to make two pairs. And we'll go over that a little bit later. But in order to do the color ones, I used Mr. Color. Uh, it's an excellent uh, lacquer paint. I've never had any issues with it before. So here I am just mixing it up and I took it over my little tiny spray booth and I was trying to put it on as thin as possible, okay? And those mylars were obviously waxed up. And now we're just going to be mixing our epoxy resin. And the only difference here between the two uh, tail groups was that I did add some white tint to the uh, colored ones just to pop the color a little bit more. Okay, so we got our resin poured out and now we are just going to wet out the uh, pre-preg um, wing spars as the epoxy is nice and viscous right now and now's the time to do it. And we just set that aside for now and then we moved on to the wing cores here. I'm gonna be moving along pretty quickly here, but so we've soaked out our roller and now we're just applying it to the wing cores themselves along that leading edge where that carbon tool is, okay? So we're just gonna wet this out and we're also just gonna let this sit and soak. And it's very important that we get this leading edge fully uh, saturated here. So it's <laughs> it's been a while since I've done the epoxying, so kind of fumbling around a bit but we'll get it done and as you can see on the other side there's a hinge but uh, yeah just take your time with it um, just try to make sure that you get it all covered I probably could have done a nicer job here as far as uh, making it a little bit neater but here regardless it's okay so now that we've got the leading edge on the top and the bottom. I just picked it up and now we're gonna make sure that that leading edge is saturated as well. That's where the carbon toe is and that's gonna give us a lot of strength in this tail. Right. So now after we're done that, we're just gonna put this down and we're gonna use probably one of my favorite tools of all. Uh, doing epoxy work uh, who would believe it but it's just little like it's a stick with a piece of sponge on the end of it <laughs> we're gonna use it to uh, kind of stipple in the epoxy into this hinge material and the hinge material if you don't know it's um, it's nylon uh, coat lining material so we want it to the epoxy resin to actually go through the fabric and penetrate into the foam underneath so we get a nice bond between everything here and I should also mention that um, on the colored version I as I said I did apply some tint to the epoxy resin and it really did no effect at all for the uh, it didn't affect the epoxy at all as far as strength or anything else it just gave it a white color so here's our mylars um, I've waxed these with uh, with a wax release about three coats and right now I'm just putting on the fabric the fiberglass it's a 0.75 ounce fiberglass and all this material has been cut on a bias, so it's all at a 45 degree angle and just that's basically just for strength okay so I'm just laying it down here and I'm gonna start to well we just do, do the same on all four mylars here I'm just gonna wet it out completely and usually I dab it on but uh, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to show you this a little bit. I don't have to show you me like rolling this thing out for a couple minutes. So here it is. Um, I've rolled everything out and it's all saturated. And now what I'm doing is I'm just applying a doubler to the one side of the uh, horizontal stab. 
and it's going to line up right with the hinge line and I'm just going to put one doubler on each uh, unit so one for this horizontal stop one for the rudder um, I don't know I I like using uh, doublers for the control surfaces uh, especially in this case since they are so so thin um, here a little bit of weight I don't mind adding for the sake of uh, strength I think it's I think it's a wise investment so anyways that there just trim it off a bit there and we just wet out the the double I just put down we're just gonna wet that out as well and after we're done wetting that one out for the uh, rudder I'm just gonna go over everything one more time and make sure everything is saturated with resin okay at this point that's what you want okay so everything looks good right now okay the next step is we're just gonna right now I'm just trimming off the uh, the excess fiberglass cloth that's hanging over the uh, the side and the fronts of mylars okay so I'm just taking a really super sharp like a brand new blade and this exacto knife and I'm just working around the front of the mylar you can use the edge of the mylar as a guide it's pretty easy um, it's not so easy in my case because I want to try to keep my head out of the camera so it's a little bit more difficult for me but uh, we got it done here and you just peel it off and after that I've just picked up those mylars and I've put them on as clean wax paper surface okay so I'm just getting away from that uh, newspaper it's covered with epoxy and crap so just keeping things clean here okay um, I've as you can tell by the top left corner I've already put my little carbon fiber skid plate on the bottom of one half of the rudder and right now I'm just applying the other half and this skid plate it's really really thin material um, I think it's like 3k uh, carbon toe it's very very thin and it just loves to fall apart on you for some reason well I know why it's good it's so thin there is a thread running through it to kind of keep it together but it's you have to work with that stuff in a big sheet so okay so now it's time to debulk and how we do that we just take out our cheap toilet paper we got from the dollar store or wherever and we're just gonna put that on here and I've got uh, a hard rubber roller and I'm just going to roll out the uh, all over the uh, the toilet paper and it's gonna soak up a ton of resin that we don't need okay it's gonna leave enough for the job but it will take a lot off okay it's really important that you do this step and uh, it's also important that you don't wait around and uh, to take this off okay if you leave it too long it will actually bond to the paper and you'll end up pulling off everything at once and it's not very good so just uh, do it pretty like uh, be timely about it and just like gently pull off that paper and it'll come off nice and easy like that okay so it's just a gentle pull okay you don't have to rip it off and uh, as you can see that right there it was trying to lift up that little piece of carbon so I'm just gonna coax it back in a position here <laughs> and that's it okay so now I've taken the, uh, the carbon carbon fiber uh, pre preg spars okay I've laid one down on the rudder there these have been soaking remember so I've just taken one uh, the one half of the rudder and then the other half of the horizontal stab okay and as you can see on my mylars I got an H on on the other sides that's where the hinge is gonna go on that other side 
This side I've got it marked off, so those carbon spars are going to be on the same position, top and bottom. Okay, so you can't see it on camera right now, but I've actually taken the um, the foam core and I've patted it down with a toilet paper uh, just to debulk that as well. Okay, because I was really pretty liberal with the uh, with the resin when I was wetting out the leading edge and the hinge, so I've just debulked it quite a bit. Okay, so now I'm just laying it down on that uh, on the mylar. I'm lining up the front leading edge of that foam core with the leading edge of the mylar beneath it. Okay, and now I've put on the uh, the top carbon spar, and then I've put on the other top carbon spar on the rudder. And now what I'm going to do. Let's just pick up one of the mylars. This is the top. And we just place it right on top. And we just center it up. And we'll try to place it so the front edge of the mylar is even with the uh, front edge of the wing core. Okay. And I guess I did that pretty good. I moved on. <laughs> Usually it's a struggle for me, but that time it went out perfectly. Okay, now for the rudder. Uh, you can see that I let that carbon tow for that uh, little skid plate. I just let it run wild. It's not going to affect anything. I'm just going to trim that off later, okay? It can go inside the breather bag, and it's not going to hurt a single thing. So now that I'm happy with the alignment of the mylars, I'm just taking some tape. And I'm just kind of putting on three pieces. Uh, you don't need much. You just want enough there to, so the, the mylars don't move around on the uh, on the foam core when you're when you're putting it in in that bag, which I'm doing right now. Okay, that's a breather bag. I've made out of a piece of plastic poly and paper towels over top, and. I've made that and it's it's very very excellent I highly recommend that you make one too because it makes releasing it very easy so everything goes inside the vacuum bag that I have and um, um, also see the bag the breather bag is a, is a little short of that uh, vacuum valve okay so you want uh, a path for the air to get to that uh, breather bag okay that's why I put that on even though the bags got dimples inside for that I just did it anyways so now I'm just uh, sealing off the end of the bag I've applied some acrylic latex on the inside at the very edge of it and um, I use that uh, this method is excellent I've never had any issues with leaking so then I just put it right on top of uh, some tuck tape that's extremely sticky and I'm just smushing down the uh, the acrylic caulking and now I'm just folding over that tuck tape and once I've put everything together here and stuck everything together it's it's 99% uh, idiot proof <laughs> okay so okay so now I've applied vacuum and um, I'm just making sure that there's no major wrinkles on the uh, the uh, the mylars here, okay? So I'm just kind of easing out any major wrinkles. And as you can see with my thumb here, I'm just making sure that leading edge has got no like little air gaps there. So just to get a nice seal on that leading edge. And yeah, your finger works really good for this. So once that's done, and we're happy with it, I've just put some weight on it. I just used a couple books here, old cookbooks, and a couple metal bricks. That weight is just on the back, uh, well, I'd say maybe three quarters of the, of, the, uh, of the units. You don't have to go right up to the leading edge. And now I'm just putting on our hot box. It's a temperature control box. I've got some incandescent lights in there for some uh, heat and it's going to be hooked up to a thermostat 
And after 24 hours at 27 degrees Celsius, we are done. So here we are, we're just releasing it out of the, uh, the breather bag. As you can see, it just pulls off easy. There is no hassle with paper towels. And you can tell, like look at all the excess epoxy that's ran out of the tail end of these things. Okay, so now I just taking off, I took off the tape off everything. And now it's just time to pull back the mylars, which is always well, kind of a cool time. Let's see what we got here. Get our finger underneath the one edge of the mylar and just kind of gently pull up. And you can see that that uh, skid plate there, uh, nothing happened. It, it's fine the way it was, just running wild like that. And take off the other mylar and. So far everything looks really nice, glass finish. You can see um, between, just past the leading edge, the color changes a bit, but I can assure you that's bonded. I'm not worried about that at all. Okay, so just take off the other mylar off the horizontal stab and see what we got here. Sometimes it's, Kind of hard to find the edge of the mylar but there we go and it's same result i mean those it's just like a glass finish on these things and to think like we pot those mylars at the dollar store right <laughs> that's awesome so everything looks excellent nice 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 so these things also have a really really good rigidity uh, across this whole span so really excellent okay so here's the colored version that we did um, basically it's the same finish quality and everything except uh, well obviously these are painted and that's that semi-gloss uh, mr. color and here I'm just pointing out like you can easily see where this needs to be trimmed on the trailing edge uh, on the rudder I use some mr. color yellow clear it's kind of like a candy uh, so I don't know I just like the color of it and here you can see that white epoxy that I used uh, on this on these two here okay showing through in the leading edge and I'm just pointing out where you need to sand that leading edge there okay there's a little ridge that you have to um, sand off on both sides and it's it's not a big deal it only takes a couple minutes so here, the easiest way to trim off the, uh, the trailing edge is with a pair of scissors. And I usually leave about two millimeters here with the scissors, and then I finish it off with um, a sanding block like this here. And, you know, I, I leave like maybe one and a half, one millimeter on the trailing edge of, of just fiberglass and it just gives it like a razor edge. And here I'm um, just dealing with that little uh, ridge that's on the leading edge. All right, so here's the reason I had to build <laughs> two sets of tails. Um, yeah, I wanted to experiment with uh, color on these guys and uh, I found out there's a price to pay. So, okay, here's the rudder of the colored one is 6.11. The horizontal stab of the colored one is 7.83. Now the plain Jane rudder comes in at 4.36, about two grams lighter. And the horizontal stab elevator is about 5.4, right around two grams lighter. All in all, it's about a four gram difference between the two sets and to tell you the truth I don't want an extra four grams hanging way out in the tail okay that's that means too much ballast so I'll be using the plain Jane ones okay so let's move on uh, we're gonna demonstrate the hinge cut and how to do the the spring for the for the pull system on the um, on this plane so the first thing you do is basically you lay it out Use your template again and mark the hinge line for the, uh, for in this case, the rudder. Okay, so I've got that marked off. 
Okay, the whole thing here is to... <laughs> the only giveaway or the takeaway you should have from this is take your time. Now get the sharpest knife you can get and we are just going to take very, very, very light cuts, okay? Uh, try not to move the ruler and use that same score line, okay? Uh, it's gonna be difficult. Um, I maybe recommend like taping the ruler down so it won't move, but anyways, just take your time and until you finally, and then you'll feel it on the hinge material, okay? At that point, you can actually kind of separate it a bit and just bend it over an edge of something like this. And gently, gently, gently. We're not cutting into the hinge, okay? We are just barely scraping it. Okay, so once it's completely cut all the way down to the hinge, but not through the hinge, now it's just time to bend this thing over, okay, on itself. And it should do it fairly easy, okay? Just use a corner of some type. And here you can see me just uh, folding it over on itself. Um, it may appear that something's out of alignment here. It's just because that spar kind of went crooked on the layup, so that's why. But the hinge line's perfect. Okay, so now we're doing an undercut underneath the skin of the rudder and between the skin and the foam, okay? And I'm just going in maybe, I don't know, one and a half, two millimeters in between the foam and the skin. And then I'm gonna take this block sander and I'm going to sand directly under the skin at, I'm gonna have this block at about a 45 degree angle, okay? Uh, I'm not sanding the hinge, I'm just sanding that directly under the skin at that flap just to make room for movement somewhere for this control surface to go, okay? Just like that. And you can see it tucks up under that flap very nicely, okay? So that should be enough movement. Okay, here's the spring material that we're gonna be using. It's 0.5 millimeter spring steel. And for the rudder, you're gonna be using a piece that's gonna be approximately, I don't know, 80 millimeters long. And for the stab, it's gonna be 90. But the first thing you do is you bend a 90 degree angle, just like that, about 15 millimeters, okay? The second bend is gonna be at the 50 millimeter mark for the rudder here. And this bend is gonna be directly opposite of the uh, initial one, but it's also at 90 degrees, okay? Just like that. So you'll have, you'll have to trim the legs off, which, you know, that, that's fine, but I mean, I usually have mine at around 15 millimeters each, but the important thing is to have that 50 in between, okay? So just laying it on the rudder like this, you can see how everything's gonna fit together here, okay? So uh, I've marked the center and then the two hole locations, but uh, in th working practice here, all I need is the one hole because uh, the other one is dictated by um, the location of this one, okay? We're not gonna go by that measurement hole. We're gonna go by visually exactly where it is because it's very, very important to get that one right. Okay, so I'm just boring. You can use a pin for this or anything. I just happen to have a really tiny drill bit. Okay, so then we're just gonna insert the spring into the one hole there. And with that in position, we're gonna bring it over to where it should lie naturally. And we're gonna mark this position, okay? This is where you have to be very, very accurate, okay? And you gotta mark that to where it's, it wants to sit inside that, uh, where the hole's gonna be inside the foam, okay? So be careful with this one. If you mess it up, then the spring's gonna wanna work itself out and you'll just have to bend another spring to fit that hole location, okay? So, in with that tiny, tiny drill. Um, really, use a pin, it's probably better. But have your thumb or your finger on the one side there, underneath, over top of the skin, 
and you will actually feel it okay and I should have marked this off like at 15 millimeters deep so I don't go too far but I kind of figured out like where I need it so in goes the other one and that is your spring okay so as you can tell it's probably going to be really really weak because that spring's going to just find its way through that foam it's not strong enough just in that foam so we're going to need re reinforcement and what i use is a piece of two millimeter uh, carbon tubing and it's got an inside diameter of one millimeter so this spring is going to fit right in there okay so what i do is i just cut a couple pieces at 15 millimeters and i'll just use some five minute epoxy and put them right inside that hole that i've already made i might have to enlarge that hole just a bit but i try to keep it as tight as possible so here you go um everything's dried up the springs you can easily take them in and out now there's no fear of the wire going through the skin and that my friends is basically a wrap all right let's check out the movement on this thing yeah it's gonna be nice look at that it's springy all right remember this guy yeah <laughs> dude okay so i'm just gonna tell you like the next time we see you we're gonna be mounting these two uh tail fins and we're gonna use this carbon fiber pylon and we're gonna use that to mount the horizontal stabilizer just like that underneath there's a reason for it and we're also gonna be mounting the rudder on the end and i'm gonna show you how to make some carbon fiber control horns and it's going to be fun and i'll see you guys later don't forget like sub comment peace <laughs>